You're welcome to another episode of The Heart of the Matter. Today we're talking about an aspect of parenting which has to do with the kind of people that support parents in their homes in the raising of their children. Um, and it's very important the kind of, of uh, domestic staff or house help that we have um, looking after our children because some of them are exposed to our children sometimes more often than parents themselves are. Uh, and so um, my guest today is Mrs. Ronke Adeni who has founded a, a, a not-for-profit organization to help parents in, in this regard. Um, you're welcome to the heart of the matter, Ronke. Thank you, Pastor. Thanks for having me. What, what motivated you to start Helps at Homes initiative? Right. Um, the initiative was started uh, for a couple of reasons. The first one was actually out of um, personal experience. Okay. Um, shortly after I relocated to Lagos, um, I relocated in um, 2011 August. Okay. And my husband joined uh, the family December of the same year. Okay. About three months later, on the 1st of April, we actually had an armed robbery in the house. Okay. Um, so essentially everything was cleared out. We were, we were tied up. My husband was badly beaten. He was hurt and had to be in, um, he had to be in hospital. He had to have major borehole surgeries in his head. Um, we um, have a preschool also. I was actually taken in the middle of the night to the preschool where um, things were actually cleared out. The computers, laptops were also cleared out. So it was really traumatic experience for us at the time. And by the time the police came and um, we did a lot of um, research and talking, we actually found out that it all, all pointed to um, a domestic worker which, who was working as security for us at the time. Um, that's the first reason. The second reason is also to create awareness to families um, so they can protect their families better um, concerning the kind of domestic workers, particularly children really, um, because all sorts of people are being hired in a very, uh, very easy fashion in any kind of manner. Um, and also to see in a longer term if um, I can work to help regulate this industry because as it is at the moment anybody can be a domestic worker and as we read in the papers now a lot of them are part of criminal gangs. Okay. Apart from which some of them are underage yes. and should be in school and not exactly. working in a domestic setting. Mm -hmm. So what is your vision? What, what is it that you aim to achieve with uh, Helps and Homes Initiative? Um, with the initiative, um, a couple of things that I want to do is first to empower families to make the right de decisions when they um, employ these people. They should employ them properly and not through just anyone. To employ people, I mean a lot of people have underage as you said um, in their homes and to hire the right people, the people with the right experience of the right age and people that can actually look after your most prized possessions properly. Um, um, part of the vision also is to, like I said earlier, is to have this industry regulated, to have, have some kind of um, database in the long term where they can be screened, some of these workers can even be trained because we bring them from all sorts of, all walks of life and um, you can't really expect, as they say, a pauper to run a palace and we just bring them in with high expectations and it causes a lot of frustration, a lot of um, domestic violence even happens as a re result of having um, a domestic worker that is not trained because they are our unskilled labor. Okay. Now, one problem mm -hmm. which you haven't mentioned but I'm sure you're aware of is the fact that there is a lot of abuse mm -hmm. uh, by domestic um, uh, help of children, I mean, sometimes sexual abuse. Yes. Um, uh, is this one of the things that is covered? Yes, by it is covered. Yes, it is covered. Um, we have a website. It's called the Helps at Home Initiative, and on there we list the different kinds of abuse. Sexual abuse is part of them. Um, physical, domestic violence, damage, all sorts of emotional abuse. So these are this is part of the things that I'm trying to protect against, because when we bring these people to our homes, they come with different kind of values. A lot of them have been hurt. They have been exposed to all sorts of things, and they don't necessarily even think it's wrong. And we'll leave them at home with our children, lock away our jewelry, lock away what is important in terms of monetary value, and leave our babies, our precious children, with them mm -hmm. and take off and go to work. So yes. So so how? How do you intend to be able to come alongside parents and offer help? What is the kind of help you're offering? Um, for starters, information. Okay. Information is key. Knowledge is power. And as um, the Bible says, people perish for lack of knowledge. Um, and I believe that 
a lot of us are conscious of it in our subconscious. Somehow we are conscious of these things. But because of the lifestyle that we live, because we have to get on with our lives, we have to work. And if there are valid points, we kind of like shut it away. So we have to, I want to empower parents for other, the other ways that you can go about hiring in people, not just from any agent that comes into your home. So you can hire properly, let them know that there are agents that would actually screen for you. There are agents that can get you nannies that have experience, not just um, anybody from the village that you don't just know their first name, not even their surname. So you can do this properly. The agents are actually train nannies and they can get these people into your home. So first of all, it's just to give them this kind of information. Let them know the kind of risks that are associated with running this kind of things. Because sometimes we just believe that these people are harmless. We just believe they come into our homes, they can't do anything. But unfortunately, people have experienced a lot of things, including myself. We want to have a database that will carry this sort of um, of um, offenders on there, even, and it's not just the, the bad helps, let me put it that way, help that have not performed properly or abused children, even the good ones, we want to register them as well, so that if you want to um, employ them, you can come and find that these people are actually okay, because you find that when you want to register, when you want to hire a lot of nannies, out of what I hear from parents, they will tell you that they worked with uh, Mr. X, Mr. X has gone back to Finland, um, do you have a number for him? No, so there's no audit trail, so okay. if the employees are actually taking off. They can actually say, okay, I'm no longer with this nanny. This nanny has been, has been of good service to me. So when someone wants to subsequently hire them, there is that database and that reference point. Now, you've said in a, in a sense that it was the incidents of robbery in your home that inspired you. What, other, what else drives you to, to get this thing done? All right, I have a preschool in, uh, in Parkview Estates and I speak to, I'm exposed to a lot of parents. And as well, I'm exposed to a lot of nannies. And I find that in a year, a child can have up to 10 nannies or more. Mm. This nanny is bringing this child today, that nanny is bringing that child tomorrow. Different horror stories I don't even want to begin to dig out. And it was becoming really frightening and really scary and uncomfortable for, for me. We're constantly changing the passports of whoever is bringing the children to the school. And these parents are coming to the homes. I mean, we had a, an incident of a parent coming to say, oh, I need the passport of my nanny because we insist on the passport. And I asked Where why. Where is passport? Passport I... photograph. Okay, okay. Because she didn't have it for herself. She only okay. had it because we required it at the nursery. Okay. So when this nanny took off with $6,000 from her husband, she didn't, have, she didn't even know her last name. She didn't know where to check. She didn't know anywhere to find this nanny. So all the different stories I had heard, I felt I had to do something with this information. I just can't. You know, people are experiencing it, they talk about it at birthday parties, talk about it at churches, this is what my, this nanny did, this is what that nanny did. And they're just stories, and we get uncomfortable for a temporary amount of time, and then we forget about it again. So it's time for us to start doing something collectively in the community. Putting, putting information together into a database. And so what's your modus operandi? How do you deliver this service to parents? Now, delivering the service to parents, um, I, sh I should thank you again for this opportunity. It's, this is one of the um, um, avenues to um, get people to know about it. The um, online um, portal is there. We have a website. We're on Facebook. We have about um, we have two websites. We have one that has um, over 4,000 subscribers on there. We have another one that has um, about 2,000. We want to um, do a lot of blogs, a lot of um, posts to people. We want to go into churches, we want to go into schools, communities, just have little groups, anywhere where the opportunity is there. Because I believe that Nigeria, we heavily rely on domestic workers and I know that this information will be relevant to many people. So whatever avenue that we have, we'll continue to use it to spread the message and let people know that there are dangers out there. So the kind of domestic help you're looking at Nannies, cooks. Um, nannies, cooks, drivers, cleaners, gardeners, anybody that, unskilled labor, to be honest, um, any kind of person that has access to your home, um, has, has access to your children, can pose a danger to you. Now, they're not all bad, I'm not all labeling them, but they are good workers that do a good job, and some families will really not get on without these domestic workers, but you still need to be cautious of the fact that there are dangerous domestic workers out there. Well, thanks ever so much, um, viewers. Uh, this is a very important point, that the people you allow into the lives of your children, into your homes, can add value or they can take value. They can be destructive. And, and um, uh, Mrs. Adeni's uh, 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 organization is a, is a not-for-profit organization. She's doing this so that she can help parents 
to help their children develop into responsible citizens. Um, so please visit her website and get involved in this. Um, you can consult with her, you can, you can get valued information um, from her website and, and, and so on. So you stay tuned, we'll be back with the Heart of the Matter. Watch your favorite Heart of the Matter episodes online at www.theheartofthematter.tv Also check out exciting behind the scenes photos. Leave your comments and like us on Facebook. trafficking is simply defined as the movement of a person from one point to the other for the purpose of exploitation. Exploitation could be sexual exploitation, it could be labor exploitation, it could be any form of exploitation. Once a person is moved from his or her normal place of abode to another place and she's exploited or is exploited, it is human trafficking. NAPTIP as an agency is saddled with the responsibility of eradication of human trafficking. And for the purpose of this interview, I will summarize what we do into four P's, the four P's mandate of NAPTIP. Uh, first and foremost, the first and foremost is protection. We have protection, we have prevention, we have prosecution, and the last is partnership. Um, when we talk about house help, we first of all have to refer to what the law says. Now, trafficking, like I mentioned earlier, is the movement of a person from one place to the other for the purpose of exploitation. By this definition, if a child under the convention, a child is anybody below the age of 18, if he's moved from any part of Nigeria to an urban center, and that person is being used as a house guard where she's exploited. She's working and a third party is collecting wages on behalf of that child. It's trafficking. It is not allowed in law. Such a person, such madam, will become a visitor or a guest to Nabjit. Having said that, the Child Rights Act states specifically that a child is only permitted to work within his immediate family environment and it went further to say that such job should be jobs that are not hazardous that are not detrimental to the health of such children and so in whatever job a child is employed either in the family or outside the family it should be a job that will not deprive the child from going to school the child deprive the child from having his or her freedom so in a situation where a girl is brought to a house where she is not a member of that family, she's made to work from 5 in the morning to 11 p.m., she's not properly cared for, she's beaten as often as the madame decided, and also she's not sent to school. When other members of the family are leaving for work, she's locked inside. She is under servitude. It is an act of man in humanity to man. It is the responsibility of people to contact NAPTIP and it is our responsibility to rescue such a child. We have rescued so many and a lot of people have been prosecuted. But according to the Child Rights Act, everything done must be in the best interest of a child. Where a child is rescued and in the course of our investigation, we look at it, the child is attending school. She's been properly catered for. We now look at it that she's not been exploited. The best we do is to advise such madam to go for proper fostering in line with the Child Rights Act. In line with the Child Rights Act, there are acceptable methods under the law for fostering. And such a person will be advised that look, this child, since she's attending school, which is in her best interest or in his best interest. What you need to do is to follow a proper method of legalizing his or her stay in your house. 
by going through the process of fostering. And such a person will be referred through the Ministry of Women Affairs, they will go to court, and then it will be normalized. Then that child will be with such family legally, and they cannot take care of the child. But once the child is exploited, once the child is being abused, the person becomes a friend to that child, and will face the law of the land. That is what is obtainable in terms of housing. My advice would be, whoever wants to employ a household, it is better to employ somebody who is above the age of 18. And the person should be paid. The pe it should not be paid through a third party. Somebody is working in your house. That person should be paid his or her salary, not through a consultant, not through a third party. So we we'll have no problem. But once you employ a child below the age of 18, it is an offense, it is not allowed. That is what I'm saying. Welcome back to the Heart of Matter, where uh, we're talking to Mrs. Ronkadini about her not-for-profit organization called Helps at Home Init Initiative. Um, Ronke, we've been talking about things from the perspective of the employer of domestic staff. But what about from the perspective of the staff themselves? Because some of them have horror stories. Some of them are, are, are maltreated. Um, as I said earlier on, some of them should be in school. And their parents are happy to put them into a domestic situation because um, they just can't afford to feed them. So, so what, tell us a bit about the stories you've heard mm -hmm. from this, the perspective of the domestic staff themselves. Um, several stories I've heard. Um, first, I should say that there's an agency, NAPTIP, which is National Agency um, Against the Prohibition of Trafficking Persons, that okay. already exists. This um, organization is by Lagos State, and um, they will not tolerate um, domestic workers under the age of 18 to be hired. It is illegal for um, domestic workers under the age of 18 to be um, hired in Lagos, in Nigeria. However, that, that, that is news to me. It is. Uh, and I'm sure most of our viewers don't know this. Yeah, it's N-A-P-T-I-P, -P, not okay. So they're and just enforcing They have a website online. Law. Yes, they do that. Um, it's not, um, it's probably not w well known like you said, but it does exist and it's functional. Um, there are stories, like you said, horror stories. I've heard um, stories of um, people being hired for as little as 3,000. Um, I've heard of people that have been um, hired to work and they work for the whole year and go out, go back to their villages or wherever with just very little money. I've heard of stories where um, the um, wife, the domestic worker is not making the wife attend to the husband's needs, you know, all sorts of horror stories. Um, unfortunately, not all of them are heard, not all of them come out. But if they do come out, it is illegal, and those people that do things like that will actually get arrested. Now. On, my, on the website, despite the fact that we're talking about domestic, dangerous domestic workers, we also talk about how they should be treated in the homes. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about, oh, domestic, some of them can be dangerous. We actually tell you how you should pay them. Mm -hmm. You should pay them well. They should be paid a minimum wage. Um, they should be fed. They should be closed. They should put in a, in a secure place. They don't necessarily have to live in the home. If you have a, a, a BQ that you can house them, you can have them there. And sometimes we don't even always need a domestic worker. The over-reliance is there. You can have the cleaner come in and out. The husbands can help in the homes. Um, so there are other avenues, other ways that you can find support mm -hmm. and the ways that you can treat these people better. Because at the end of the day, if you're leaving them with your home and your children and you don't treat them well, then don't expect the best from them. How interesting. I mean, because I find... Um, apart from the dangerous ones that give inside information mm -hmm. to, to outsiders and that, you know, um, abuse children. Uh, th th there are lots and lots of domestic staff that, that are abused. Now, as you said, 18 is the minimum age yes. at which somebody should be working. Yes. And I bet you yep. there's thousands and thousands of domestic staff out there Under the that age are less than the age of 18. That's correct. And yet their employers will say, I'm doing them a favor. Mm -hmm. Because if I didn't employ them, they would be hungry. That's right. And, you know, um, uh, it, what, what do you think, what would you recommend to government um, 
about the best way to deal with that problem? Yes, there's a lot of poverty which you have um, stated correctly. Um, if I'm going to recommend anything, um, when if someone is going to have a domestic worker of that caliber, somebody that's underage, and I believe that that person should go to school, and I believe so, government should make sure. sure that there's availability of places in schools yes. for everybody under the age of 18. Yes, that, that, is, um, that is what will begin to help. Because mm -hmm. the parents are not putting them in schools because they cannot ed educate them. Mm -hmm. However, I've heard in some states that government are actually now putting some of these people in schools and educating mm -hmm. them in one way or the other. It's not enough yet, but at least there are stories that these things have begin begun to happen. So hopefully, as time goes on, we are expectant that hiring of um, children under the age of 18 will be put uh, to a stop. And to be honest, a lot of people don't actually know that it is illegal to have people under the age of 18. Perhaps when the news gets out there, they would be cautious when they're hiring people. And a people. few prosecutions <laughs> <laughs> would probably help. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, Ronke, what do you see as the future of Helps at Homes? initiative? Um, the future first is to um, empower people to n give them the knowledge and the know-how of how they will help um, hire domestic workers. I really want to work to protect children because I believe that they are the ones that are most at risk when it comes to the domestic workers. A traumatized workers. child. They're a traumatized child, yes. Uh, from the age of two, three, four, mm -hmm. is traumatized for life yes. if, if that child is traumatized because of abuse or That's whatever. That's right, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, the future is to ensure that um, parents are making the right decisions when they are uh, um, leaving their children with domestic workers, um, to make sure that they educate their children also if they have to leave their children with domestic workers. Despite, no matter how busy the parents are, there should always be an avenue where they can talk to their child and hear, because sometimes the child can tell you what the issues yeah. are. Mm -hmm. Okay. In conclusion, I, I think one of the cures mm. to these problems is parents spending more time with their children. Absolutely. What do you say? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, parenting is key. It's everything. Uh, we cannot continue to have so many children and have such little time for those children. Uh, the house helps cannot be raising our children. They have a different set of values and we cannot expect them to have the values that we want when we don't spend any time with the children. Okay. Well, um, Ronke, it's been great having you on the heart of the matter. Thank you very um, much. It's been a privilege. We, we do, we'll, we'll give all the information so that viewers can get in touch with you through your email or website, Twitter and, and Facebook, etc. Excellent. Thank um, you. Uh, so great having you. Uh, you know, it's, it's been a joy bringing this program because one of my big concerns has been the quality of parenting that we've had in our country and because um, we've delegated or relegated a lot of our responsibilities as parents to domestic help and you know it's not the best and so please take advantage of the opportunities that getting in touch with helps at homes initiative will, will afford you we've had great pleasure in bringing this episode to you and we we'll look forward to seeing you again next week when we come back with another episode of The Heart of the Matter. Until then, stay blessed.